road. themselves. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Morning. And good evening. This is recorded. So people are going to watch it just whenever. Uh, let's go in order of longest name to shortest name to introduce ourselves. Please give us your <laughs> name, your organization and your pronouns. I think the longest name is Ace. Okay, well, I am Ace Analyst. I use he, him pronouns, and I am an intern slash writer for Blaseball Prospectus. Thanks so much, Ace. I think I think Joey's next. Hi, my name's Joey T. Badger, the voice of the Boston Flowers, and I run the Sports Hub Blaseball streaming service. Fantastic. And he series. Thank you so much, Joey. Uh, well, let's go with Murr. <laughs> Uh, I'm Mer Lafferty. I'm a podcaster and author, but essentially I'm just a baseball enthusiast that likes to talk about it a lot. All right. Thanks so much for coming on, Mer. And then I think the last panelist with the shortest name is probably going to be Jay. Uh, I am Jay. I am the representative for the Canada Moist Talkers, also the co-founder of Blaseball Cares. Be sure to check them out at blaseballcares.com for all your baseball merchandise needs. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, panelists, viewers. We've also got one more special guest with us on the show, and that would be my roommate, Priya. Priya, can you introduce yourself and let us know uh, why you're hanging out? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Priya. I use she, her. And I am joining to learn more about Blaisal because I don't know all that much, and it should be fun to hear um, and react to all of this exciting Blaisal content. All right. Thank you so, so much, all of you, for coming. Viewers, on the show today, we're going to recap Season 10 of Blaseball. Let's start with what happened during Season 10. So there were a couple of big events that I have picked out that I think we should talk about. Um, but if you all uh, panelists have anything else you want us to get to, and sorry about the jittery screens. It's a feature of Max. Um Panelists, if you have anything that you would like to add in, feel free to just uh, shout them out. But for now, let's start with the effects of the weather decrees and the fifth base that we got this season. Uh, Jay, do you want to tell us what happened with the weather decrees this season and uh, fifth base? Yeah, uh, looks like a lot of the a lot of the weather types uh, got kind of shuffled around and a bit more intense especially blood drain there was gurgies left and right the entire <laughs> season <laughs> mostly mostly defensive abilities uh our own beans mcblaze got i think is now a six star defensive player oh my Richardson gosh. games from the shoe thieves is now like eight stars it's ridiculous wow that's a lot yeah, but that was yeah that was Speaking the one of I'm, thieving <laughs> the one that I noticed the most <laughs> was the blood drain. Uh, I didn't really see any effects as far as eclipses or bird weather, but the yeah the main one was the blood drain and the fifth base uh, really messed with a lot of the teams. Just having an extra <laughs> base there, having to overcome that extra hurdle to get runners to score, it it hurt a lot of teams. Yeah. Boy, do I have some thoughts about the fifth base. <laughs> oh, let's hear them. Do tell. Oh, my goodness. Uh, covering some of the Flowers game. Flowers, not the most offensively explosive team. Uh, it's sometimes hard to get on base, and boy, are they thirsty for bases. Having an extra base really stifled the Flowers offense this year, and a lot of teams as well. And I really gave the wild high such an advantage, having to run a whole extra base. And, and also, 
uh, the way it's set up, it's like a little heart where people have to run around the bases and going from fourth to home uh, is like double the amount of, of, of distance from going from one base to another. It was bonkers. And uh, I think it really helped a lot of teams who had a lot of power hitting because those home runs meant a lot more scoring and a lot more victories. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot harder to get around the bases this season, <laughs> especially given that the the actual fifth base is literally further away from home plate. You literally had to run further to get back. Oh, my gosh. You know, one of the other things that happened this season was that there were some icons that appeared on the idle leaderboard. Does anyone recall exactly what happened with those? They kind of appeared and then went away. Uh, yes. I... No, they never went away. Oh, they didn't go away? Yeah, Did they? they? Uh, they went away, I believe, after game 99. And the players that were in that spot got like that certain power up mm. so like if, it, if the birds icon uh they they got like affinity for crows to where they would perform better in bird weather and it kind of worked out in all of our favors that we got players that were on the null team to get most of those blessings as it helped us in the final boss battle at the end of the season mer what were you gonna say about the about the icons on that leaderboard yeah, one thing that was interesting is I uh, it was every third uh, person on the board, except for number 14, mm. which was the microphone. Whenever mm. we put somebody alive in that spot, it would have the color that we've come to associate. Red for blood drain, purple for uh, the crows, etc. But when we put an incinerated player in there, it just kind of went to a more incineration blue rather than... Um, the 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 solar eclipse blue and so i noticed that that well it, it was just indicating that it was an incinerated person in there i don't know like what the change really meant because those people did get the modifications that we were hoping they would so yeah yeah uh, I, like... I didn't even notice that huh that's, yeah it's really cool did I'd that like to add the, oh yeah the go only ahead. reason we discovered that is because the Baltimore Crabs decided that they wanted to incinerate their already incinerated player, Tillman Henderson, a second time. <laughs> they wanted to revive and re-incinerate Tillman Henderson. And that is why we discovered this feature that had so many consequences on Day X. Oh, my goodness. And, and Henderson ended up coming back. Yeah. Uh, and now it's just here. It's like, welcome back, Tillman. <laughs> no longer also, on I the Crabs. how... how... Right. Only the only crabs, but I love how we had we could we, we had to specify alive players or dead players when dealing with any any sort of these uh, shenanigans. Yeah, only in baseball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but wasn't it, wasn't Randall Marijuana incinerated twice now? Uh, uh, Sebastian Telephone. Sebastian Telephone. Yeah, Sebastian yeah. Sebastian Telephone. Yeah, oh, we'll a get... lot of stuff was going on really fast last night. There was a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lot. We'll get yeah. to that in the last segment of this show. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, Ashiok Nightmare Beaver just threw out in the chat that is important to talk about is Squiddish Dot Polka Dot Patterson was previously shelled, and I'll just take this one. Polka Dot Patterson was trapped in a giant peanut shell, and then the monitor. Uh, who is the giant squid who appears sometimes to usually to help us out, decided that peanuts were delicious and was going to try to eat Polka Dot Patterson in the giant peanut shell. And this was a thing that a lot of fans were concerned was going to happen. People were concerned like, oh my gosh, if the giant squid god is going to eat our fans in the peanuts, then are they, are they going to be okay after that? And it turned out, yes, they were okay. They just became... A wee bit squiddish. <laughs> that was, I thought well, that was, I was wild. I was so scared. Yeah. I was so scared oh we gosh. were going to lose Polka Dot Patterson. I, I was like, no, no, please, this poor innocent person. Uh, but now he's got a little squiddy. Just a, little, just a bit squiddish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still don't know you what know, squiddish does. What? Us here in Canada, we're also very worried uh, with them being our best pitcher by far. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and then we just kind of embraced it. Like, if this is going to happen, Let's just let it happen. We came up with the idea of the Polk communion where <laughs> oh no, we get we get <laughs> we got Polka Dot Patterson as the number one like shelled player to be able to have this date with the moist one, as it were. Aww. The moist one. <laughs> and it turns out, uh, turns out now Dot's just a bit squiddish. We don't know what that does yet. 
I am <laughs> anxious to find out. I yeah. think dot and dot and the number free. of bullets there. A number. Yeah. Polka oh, yeah. Dot Patterson was in great okay. danger this season. <laughs> Um, there's one other thing that I want to mention was, before we move. we're almost out of time. There's one other thing I want to mention before we cut to break, and that was Jalen Hot Dog Fingers' fate. So Jalen Hot Dog Fingers, uh, in case you haven't heard, was the first player to be incinerated in all of Blaze Ball right after the start of the Discipline era. Era, she was incinerated by a rogue umpire. She was then resurrected via various necromancy shenanigans that the fans <laughs> did. <laughs> Um, and we've been happy to, well, we've been mostly happy to have her back since then. And then suddenly in the middle of the season, she appeared to be dead again. And did anyone catch how that happened? <laughs> well, yes? the microphone account on Twitter repeatedly throughout the season, these past few seasons, has been tweeting out Jalen's name. And so mm. a lot of people assume that Jalen had a special connection to the microphone. And so when there was a microphone slot that appeared on the idle leaderboard in slot 14, a lot of people figured that Jalen Hot Dog Fingers was supposed to be there. Mm. But then I believe after day 99, after all those idle leaderboard events occurred, it was found that Jalen Hot Dog Fingers, who was in that microphone slot, had been incinerated and replaced by who else? Tillman Henderson in the <sighs> shoot thieves rotation. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Which is poetic. It's, it's, of course. it's, per it's perfection. Uh, it's perfect place ball. All right. Well, Priya, I wish I had time to ask you whether you're hopelessly confused about anything we've said, but we're out of time for this segment. So thank you so much, panelists. Blazeball fans, don't go away. When we return, we're going to go over what happened in the Blazeball postseason in season 10. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Kimberly Dauber, a Blaze Ball in the Sky with a microphone. If you love Blaze Ball and you love podcasts, you should be listening to my podcast, Take Me Out to the Blall Game. Take Me Out to the Blall Game is your friendly neighborhood Blaze Ball podcast. I started it because there are always so many amazing things happening in the Blazeball community, and I want to talk to all the people doing them. On the show, you can learn about Blazeball Cares, participate in a memorial for Kiki Familia, hear about the origins of the sacrifice, and more. If that sounds like fun, check out our website by going to blazeballpodcast.com. Or subscribe to Take Me Out to the Blall Game on your favorite podcatcher. Once again, that's blazeballpodcast.com and Take Me Out to the Blall Game on your favorite podcatcher. Hello, viewers. We are back live on the Blazeball News Network Season 10 Recap Stream. In our last segment, we just went over what happened during the season, and now we're going to talk about what happened during the Blazeball postseason. Now, this is not including what happened after the postseason, but just up until the conclusion of the internet series. Um, I'm sorry, Kimberly. Can, yes. I, can I ask one quick question? Did sure. anybody uh, catch the uh, time? Did anyone catch the what? The, the what? Crover, Crover, I believe it was called Crover Time Crover when time. Uh, there was a bug found when somebody was, <laughs> I can't remember which game it was, but somebody was, was scared off by crows and out, but it was the third out and the game was not designed for that third <gasps> out by crows to be the third out. So they kept playing oh. and it wasn't until someone tried to steal a base that, uh, <laughs> yeah, the 17 out inning. Uh, they got 17 outs before someone tried to steal a base, got out, and for some reason that triggered it. And I think that is what pushed the 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 playoffs one hour later because everything. I thought it was this season. Uh, it was yeah. Looking at baseball wiki, it was season well, nine what? in the first day. Seriously, lovers and jazz. Hands. Well, I'm very sorry. I read about it this season. I thought it was it happened somewhere near the tenth. Sorry, that's okay. It's still, it's still amazing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's still, still yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's so so baseballian. Yeah, yes, it's so completely wild. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, Crover time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this season there was an entirely different bug. Uh, tell us what yes. the other bug was, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll talk about it. Um, 
Okay, so I believe that this season started off with some wild card games. Uh, Ace Analyst, mm. do you want to take these? What happened in the wild cards this season? Well, the the two wild card teams that were picked were the Hellmouth Sunbeams, who were the first team to reach party time this season. Oh, Same wow. thing happened last season with the Fridays. But this season, the Sunbeams emerged victorious in the wild league wild card game series. And in the mild league, the New York Millennials, who started off really poorly but surged at the end of the season and ended up with a pretty close to 500 record, also beat and swept the Philly Pies in another wild card up. So both of the wild card teams, for the very first time, have reached the, the actual Saturday postseason. Wow, that's pretty cool. How long have we even had this wild card system? This is only the second season. It started in season nine, and both of the wild card teams were promptly pushed out of the postseason. So yeah. this was a really exciting prospect for yes. the entire baseball world. Yes, the Mills clawed their way into the playoffs. Congratulations, New York Millennials, by the way, and congratulations to, oh no, I'm going to embarrass myself. What was the other team? <laughs> Sunbeams, right? Sunbeams. Sunbeams. Yes. Congratulations to both the Mills and the Sunbeams for getting in there. Uh, <laughs> the Mills can have claws if they want to. Um, Priya, have we said anything that is absolutely incomprehensible thus far that you would like for us to clarify? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any little thing. Honestly, one of the first things you said, which was the fifth base. First of all, I'm confused. <laughs> Why is it called a base and not a place? This is baseball. Oh, great that question. Is, that Incredible is a great question. question. I don't think we um, know. Does anybody uh, have an answer? I believe, I, I believe I, the I answer is just, I don't know. I, I have a theory that, that uh, a baseball is a um, um, a, port pen, a portmanteau of, of the bases that you run and blood. So it's blood with the bases in a ball that, that's there. But that's just me. You know, that does make sense. Oh, interesting. The L stands for blood with a capital L. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Prusithia. L Tiger. Um, okay, does that an does that answer that question for you? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of got stuck on that, and then like wasn't paying attention because I was just trying to figure that part out. <laughs> 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 there, there, there was a lot that happened. Um, Jalen Hot Dog Fingers also, I think, Kim, you mentioned that she was in charge, or like the head of the baseball union. What's happening with that? Oh, yeah. There is a sports union, which I can, they have a, they have a Twitter account. Let me pull it up real quick. I'm, I'm too busy talking about stuff to pull it up on the stream. But if you want to look it up, they are at sports union on Twitter. And they are, uh, they 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 have tweeted. We are wishing well to our co-representative at Idol Fourteen, which is Jalen Hot Dog Fingers uh, Twitter account. One of one of Jalen Hot Dog Fingers Twitter accounts, who disappeared after today's events. So, if you would like to help with the union, please leave us a direct message. So it looks like they're hiring. Question mark. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do. We're gonna have to get a statement from them to figure that out. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you very much, chat, for finding that particular tweet. Uh, check out the chat to find that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's make sure that we talk a little bit more also about what was going on this postseason. Um, so how did the post uh, that's something I would like to say? Yeah, go for quick. it as being the representative for the moist talkers. I know that we had some uh, expectations of us going into the season with us getting four blessings after mm. season nine, mm, yeah. everyone and us launching ahead to a 67 and 32 record in the regular season. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of people and even myself included to an extent kind of just penciled ourselves into the finals already mm. against the against presumably the Baltimore Crabs and then we ran into the millennials into the playoffs who we started the season 15 and 1 
against the Millennials. Wow. After the first 16 wow. games of the 27 we played against them this season, we had only lost one. Wow. Then they get into party time. Ugh. And, you, mm. and you've got pitchers like Penelope Matthews. And I'm pulling up their other pitcher right now. I believe it was Theodore Cervantes. Both got massive buffs, made them both five-star pitchers. And to agree with Kika in the chat, yes, we lulled ourselves into a false sense of security. <laughs> and I do have a gripe with the baseball gods. Uh, they skipped over two of our pitchers because the wild card games, including our very own Polka Dot Patterson, who did not get to pitch in that series at all. Mm -hmm. and normally mm -hmm. when they pitch, it's a guaranteed win. So we're a little peeved about that, and we, d we just want it to make sense. Make it make sense as far as the yeah. pitching rotations in the postseason go. Yeah, That's yeah. all I'm going to say at the risk of going on even further of a tangent. Uh, I'll give the floor to somebody else. Can I make one quick uh, uh, shout-out uh, for Please the postseason? Uh, as as the voice of the flowers, uh, we love our wild though family, and we're just so proud of the tacos for having a great season and for oh, yeah. making it. In. So thank you so much, tacos, for putting on a brave face. Sad how it ended, but so proud of you. What did happen with the tacos this uh, postseason? Oh boy, they they face a very interesting season where they uh, they they distilled their team down to eight players, including pitchers <laughs> and uh, and, and batters. <laughs> 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 they they get, unfortunately get knocked out in the first round. Oh, so, I'm sorry, second round. Uh, the first round on Saturday and didn't make a a, a deep run in the playoffs. But you know, I, it might have been one of the first times they made it to uh, the, the playoffs. And just so happy for them. Mm -hmm. The tacos thinned the deck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. You um, are. By the way, I'm just gonna check in with our panelists uh i think we're gonna run overtime with the show today since we got a little bit of a late start is it all right if we go till uh 240 instead of 230 is that all right Sounds good to me it's fine. Sure. All right. fine. and if you that. gotta if you gotta drop off and you gotta drop off and that's all right um but yeah let's see what else happened this postseason lots of things how did can someone tell i remember the shoe thieves made it to so i I will admit that I only tuned in to the postseason for the final game of the internet series between the Baltimore Crabs and the Charleston Shoe Thieves. And when I did, it said that the Shoe Thieves had negative one wins. Can anyone uh, tell me how that happened? Uh, well. Yes. That Mer, was a, uh, Mer, can you tell I'm me how that happened? Curious. I'm curious why it happened, but we got a taste of the black hole that is um, under the elections. Because the crabs got ten runs, and then suddenly the black hole opened. We lost the sun, and I believe the moon. They lost yeah. all of their uh, runs. The shoe thieves lost oh. a game, which put them into minus one. And um, then the uh, sun two came back, so we're all okay there. And then. <laughs> um, I heard I've heard I've heard different things about this and I didn't know the shoe thieves uh record in the first place but someone said that they lost a win as no no they heard the crabs lost a loss somewhere but since they hadn't lost anything in that series it didn't show but I wasn't sure if that actually happened or not but what we do know is that they lost all their runs so like it was the top oh. of the ninth and suddenly it was a 0-0 ball game oh. but the shoe thieves were going to have to the shoe thieves would have had to win four in a row to beat the crabs oh, after that. Oh, I see. So the crabs were just crushing the yes. shoe thieves, and then yes, absolutely. a black then hole opened. A uh, black hole, and the team got a negative run. Wow, which is why it doesn't. It's like a, a one zero game does not nearly indicate how exciting it was <laughs> at all. Yeah, and and uh, casting that game, it was just suddenly we're in extra innings after the crabs just dominated the the yes. uh, the poor shoe thieves couldn't couldn't even uh, put anything on the board. Uh, they had yeah. no runs that entire game, and then suddenly <laughs> we're in extra innings because it's tied. <laughs> yeah. And then, to, <laughs> and then to add further insult, the crabs go on to beat them again 
in that same game. Oh, yeah, they shamed yeah. him like one inning later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how that happened. Oh, I was so confused. I literally thought that the entire game had been tied at 0-0 for 10 innings. And I was like, really? <laughs> this seems unlikely for an internet series game. Um, all right. The and thing, then this is one of the this is one of the problems I have with baseball. One of the small problems, which is you blink and you miss it. Yeah. Like at this point, I knew some I knew the game was about to end, and so I turned my focus from Twitch to grab the computer to open it up so I could see it on the big screen, and it was suddenly a zero zero game, and I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. Yeah. I looked away yeah. for a second. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've actually I've actually pulled up what it said in game when that happened. Oh, what did it say? It says it says the crabs accumulate ten, the sun collapses, the moon is swallowed, the black hole forms, sun two rises. The crabs collect ten, the black hole swallows the runs, and a shoe thieves win. Huh. That makes me wonder if we get the black hole decree next season, then are we gonna just like keep losing suns? Is <laughs> Like, how many suns I, can we I go really, through? <laughs> I really hope that they, uh, they run up a counter and it says, yeah. like, all right, sun 49 has, has <laughs> been black hole. Sun 50 appears. Oh, I can't wait yeah. to see yeah. that. It's really want to the multiverse that. thing. You realize there's somebody out there without a sun now. Yeah. We just took oh, another <laughs> another existence's sun because the crabs got 10 runs. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Okay. So we're, like, yep. the, we're the baseball sun thieves? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, our son was also lost to a different universe. It was swallowed oh, up maybe, by a black maybe, hole. Maybe they just swapped. Yeah. Oh, maybe we oh. traded sons. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Con conservation of, of energy there. Yeah. Just I'm looking sorry, up at the sun. Whatever we sent them. <laughs> I'm just looking up at the sun, going like, you know, something's different about this one. It's just like it's not quite the same. It's still warm and bright and hurts. But... <laughs> it's got like Groucho Marx glasses on. <laughs> There's something different about you. <laughs> Unfortunately, now it's evil sun. Sun thieves, what are we gonna do with all these shoes? Thanks, unfortunate shit. <laughs> it's gonna be on the ticker tape, the sun number. Oh, I love this chat right now. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna need to wrap this sec segment up real quick um before we do we got to shout out the crabs ascended have they ascend have they actually ascended yet i they have not okay yeah. so if anyone out there is wondering what ascension means we're still not 100 percent sure um it as far as we know it means to go up or climb according to the commissioner someone can dig up that tweet and drop it in the chat if you want um, so stay tuned to see what happens to the crabs when they ascend because they just won their third baseball uh, championship. We know about ascension from the book. So if you want to read literally everything else we know about ascension, go over to blazeball.com, open up the forbidden book, find the thing that says they and baseball shall ascend and read that. And then you will know exactly as much as we all do about ascension. Um, then... Let's see. The only other thing I want to shout out before we cut to our next break is Reblace, which someone has shouted out in the chat just a minute ago. If you two have the problem of you don't know what just happened in a baseball game, you blinked, you missed it, as Murr said a minute ago, check out reblace.sibr.dev. That's D E V. And they will give you a nice handy summary of everything that just happened in baseball, uh, in the games and in recent events. It's a great, great website. Uh, check it out. It's reblace.sibr.dev. All right, listeners, viewers, I usually do podcasts. Uh, when we come back, we are going to get to what happened right after the postseason. And then we will bring this recap to a close. So do not go away. We will be right back after this short break. Baseball News Network. The place for the best baseball news brought to you by the best Windows XP technologies at Baseball News on Twitter. In conjunction with our writing team, hear of their own free will on BaseballNewsNetwork.com. The high energy reporting tiefling for Cynthia Helltiger, our master of stats, Firewall Andrews, Sportscasting Supreme, and yours truly, The Sportscaster. 
and the intern chief himself, Benson Nutty Newton. That's BlaseballNewsNetwork.com, BlaseballNewsNetwork.com, or at BlaseballNews on Twitter. You cannot avoid it. You cannot resist. Blaseball News Network. Hello there, viewers. Thanks for sticking with us. You are watching the Blaseball News Network Season 10 Recap, hosted by me, Kimberly Dauber, and today featuring ace analyst of Blaseball Prospectus, Joey T. Badger of the uh, Sports Hub, Murr, a podcaster and author extraordinaire, Jay, who runs the Moist Talkers Twitter and assists on Blaseball Cares, and also my roommate Priya, who is trying to figure out what is going on in Blaseball. We just talked about what happened during the regular season and the postseason, and now it's time for us to get to the second boss battle of Blaseball, which happened immediately after the Crabs won this postseason. This is arguably the biggest event of all of Blaseball this season, at least. So obviously I have left us a vast amount of time to talk about it before the end of the show. That's not true. We might like go a little bit later. Who knows? Um, I have been told by the I have been told by the chat that we are free to go as long as we want. So thanks, chat. Appreciate uh, your support. Um, okay, so let's just uh, get into it. Who wants to tell the story of what happened in this boss battle? Just give us a quick play by play because there was a lot. Anybody in particular? Well, I didn't really see the like the very introductory part of it all i saw was that immediately after the crabs shamed the shoe thieves in the last game of the internet series to secure the win and secure ascension then we suddenly get the emergency alert like the game didn't even finish and then i guess they were going to do the same thing as what happened last season with the crabs fighting the shelled ones pods and that happened for like maybe twenty seconds. Oh, don't then... forget the fact that the uh, the Sheldon was not happy, not impressed with the crabs. They oh, were like, yeah. "This, yeah. this is this is what you give me. This, this one, they ascend." Crustaceans. Crustaceans. Yeah, crustaceans. <laughs> yes. Sorry to interrupt, but I just loved how it was not impressed. Throwing a lot of shade there. Yeah. 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 And- Luckily, our friend, the monitor, the moist god, the moist one, whatever you would like to call them, came in and bailed us out and brought in the the Hall of Flame team full of faces from Blaseball past, like our very own Workman Gloom and Kiki Familia, among others, like the Marijuana Brothers and Sebastian Telephone, who got incinerated again, now is double dead, I guess. And yeah. they yeah. had a, they had a very long anime style back and forth, with finally the Hall of Flame team prevailing. And let's see, I will throw it over to Ace. Ace, uh, do you see anything particular about that game that kind of stood out to you? Well, besides the Hall Stars winning, which was pretty incredible. One thing that particularly interested me was that Jalen Hotdog Fingers, who had just been incinerated for the second time, was now on this Hall Stars team, but was continually swapping in feedback yeah. back and forth from the Hall Stars to the Shelled Ones Pods. And Axel Trollolo, the pitcher for the Shelled Ones Pods, was coming over to the Hall Stars. And this happened maybe five or six times during the game. Mm-hmm. And in the end, I believe Jalen Hotdog Fingers wound up on the pods who were defeated. And yep. we. Don't know where they are now. They seem to well, be no, on the Sheldon's sorry. Pods team. Yes. The Sheldon's Pods still is. The Hall Stars, we don't know what happened to them. And Axel Trollolo mm-hmm. is now somewhere? We don't know. There, there are 14 players that have basically just disappeared from existence. Yeah, yeah. They're no longer in the Hall of Flame. They're no longer able to be idolized. Yeah. Axel Trollolo is particularly interesting. Maybe finally at peace. The Monitor did say something about uh, a deal's a deal regarding i believe the players yeah or maybe us for showing tribute to the players yeah. so whatever we were showing tribute for the hall the monitor was uh giving back whatever was promised 
Yeah, which hopefully was, you know, our our friends. The monitor said, or someone said, do you want to see your friends again? And we did get to see some of our friends again on the Hall Stars team. So that was good. I find Axel Troll's fate extremely interesting because Axel got shelled, played on the shelled one's pods team for two boss battles, and then just like at the last minute managed to switch with Jalen Hot Dog Fingers over to the uh over to the Hall Stars team and then vanish with them. So I think that that is an extremely interesting narrative if anyone would like to maybe like come up with stories about that because Axel Troll did not, you know, did not necessarily earn that particular ascension in the same way that everybody else who is on the Hall Stars team did. Didn't get up voted with peanuts or anything. Probably would have, but definitely didn't. So I think that's absolutely fascinating. Um Let's see what else happened. I would like to think that yes. maybe that was like some kind of last ditch effort by Jalen Hot Dog Fingers wanting to save as many players as she could. Yeah. Even if it meant yeah. sacrificing herself, which is very admirable. Uh, so great job to former Moist Talker Jalen Hot Dog Fingers for mm-hmm. that amazing act of selflessness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also want to. Rise wanna... in violence, baby. Rise in violence. Rise in violence. I want to make sure we also get to what happened after the uh after the hall stars defeated the shelled ones pods so i think joey i don't think you've done a quick recap yet so what happened in there oh boy so much stuff uh what was the question again (laughs) what happened right after the hall stars defeated the shelled ones pods uh Distracting the uh, the shelled one uh, from 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 the, from their loss, uh, the the hall monitor, uh, the squid one, came up and consumed the peanut with a giant crunch, and apparently ending their tyranny finally for all, and, and kind of hopefully er- uh, ushering a new era of baseball and peace throughout the league. I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, yeah, we got a big old crunch. We got a you eat these kind of bland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, th- throwing some great shade. These gods are good at throwing shade. They're so good at shade. Crunch. Thank you, chat. Yes, crunch. The monitor also said, um, oh, by the way, boss is coming. You might want to clean up a bit. So we don't know what's going to happen with that, but apparently boss is coming and, you know, we might want to clean up a bit. Uh, the other thing that happened was as soon as the monitor went away, well, a little bit after the monitor went away, there was a new era, as uh, Joey just mentioned. We are out of the discipline era and into the era of peace and prosperity, which is listed in green on blazeball.com. So that's going on. I'm still scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's too, that's too Everybody, optimistic. Who knows how long that's going to last. Knowing Hopefully us, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um... Okay, well, we're about out of time, and I know other people have other places to be, other streams to go to, so we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. You have been watching the Blazeball News Network's Season 10 recap stream. Let's run down our panelists real quick. Where can our viewers find you if they think you're awesome and they want to see more of your work? Ace, where are you? Well, you can find my venerable news outlet, Blaseball Prospectus, at Blaseball Pro on Twitter. All right. Thank you, Ace Analyst. Joey. Oh, so excited. We are actually covering election live. We'll be talking about the election. See what happens for Ascension at 3 p.m. So come on over to at the Sports Hub. Uh, just click on my name in the chat and come join us. And uh, uh, a certain Kim will be there as well. Hey, that's me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mer. Uh, spoilers, Kim. Oh, I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. You can Mer. find me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer, or if you're interested in my books or uh, my other podcasts, it's uh, merverse.com. All right. Thank you, Mer. Jay. You can find my various musings or game coverage of the Canada Moist Talkers on Twitter at Moist Talkers. Managed to lock down that handle. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Blaseball Cares too, right? Stuff? And Blaseball Cares, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Also also on Twitter, at Blaseball Cares and BlaseballCares.com, where we are doing a fundraiser this month for LGBTQ Plus History Month. 
with the proceeds going to the Rainbow Railroad. All right. That's absolutely wonderful. Go check that out. Buy some merch. Uh, Priya, do you want to plug anything? <laughs> um, You should listen to my roommate Kim's podcast. Oh, <laughs> I can take that one. Really Thanks, Priya. <laughs> that wasn't planned at all. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Speaking wow. of wow. speaking of which, uh, my name's Kimberly Dauber. You can find my podcast, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, at blazeballpodcast.com and on Twitter at blazeballpod. Panelists, thank you so much for joining us and Priya as well. This concludes our show for today. If you missed any of it, don't worry. We're going to post it on YouTube very soon. And if you'd like to keep chatting, we, some of us will be hanging out in the Blazeball News Network Discord server after the show. And uh, Joey and I are going to be over on his stream covering elections. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. We are all love Blazeball.